There have been many rulers in this world. Many men who have come and they've exerted great power. It would be fair to say throughout history, we, the people, have often asked the question, do they really care about us? Do we really matter? Or are we there just to enable those people who are in power? Now, don't worry, I am not about to get political. But there is a great comparison to make. Those who are considered rulers have always lauded it over those who they rule. But the greatest ruler, the one who rules over all, does not rule in that way. No, the greatest ruler did not come to be served, but to serve. In the book of Mark, Jesus tells us about that and, and describes why Jesus came. Incidentally, before we read this, just something to realise, when Jesus uses the term Son of Man, he's talking about himself. And it was a term he would often use to refer to himself with. And there's a conversation he has with Peter, one of his disciples, when he makes this very specific. He asks, who do people say that I, the Son of Man, am? So just to clear that up before we read, because it makes more sense when you understand that. Mark 10, um, I'm going to read from uh, verse 42 to 45. And Jesus called them and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them, but it shall not be so among you. For whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever will be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man, that's Jesus referring about himself, came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Now, we could spend a bit of time talking about what this means for leadership, both, I guess, in the church or in the nation, and how a leader who follows Jesus must first and foremost be a servant. But that's, that's not what I want to talk about tonight. No, 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 no. Because that's not what tonight's about. That's not why somebody invited you to watch, so that you could hear about how people lead in the Bible. No, 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 that's not the reason. You were invited so you could hear about what Jesus has done for you, so that you could hear about what God thinks about you. Jesus said that he, the Son of Man, did not come to be served, but to serve. Jesus, our, our Lord, God himself, did not come to earth to lord it over us. He came to save to serve. He came on a rescue mission. Jesus left the glory of heaven. Jesus, King of heaven, set aside all his majesty, all of his position, and he left the place of perfection where angels worshipped him. And he became a servant. He came to offer the greatest act of service, our, our Lord, the one who created everything that is, came to serve you. Now, the question comes, how? Well, he offered the greatest act of service you could ever have. He gave his life. Sometimes we can wonder, maybe, in this challenging world, does anyone care? If there is a God, how can I know he cares about me at all? Maybe you've asked that question before. Maybe you felt so distant from God. You can't imagine how God could ever care for you. Or maybe you've even wondered, how has God ever shown his love to me? Well, the answer to both of those questions can be found in the cross. God loves you so much that he gave his only son, part of himself, to save you. There is no greater 
love than giving your life. There's no greater way to show love than offering up your life. Even before Jesus went to the cross, he was telling people why he had to go to it. See, Jesus wasn't arrested by accident. He wasn't sent to the cross against his will. Time and again, he told people that he had come to give his life. Jesus was not some revolutionary who was killed before his time, a common misconception. Now, Jesus' death was his mission. He says in the passage that we read, he came to give his life as a ransom for many. A ransom. Now, that's, that's quite a word because it sums up a real sense of danger, doesn't it? Ransom always suggests that somebody has been held hostage. It suggests somebody is in need of rescue. Um, someone's in need of being set free, but that can't just happen. That, that, that comes at a cost. Ransom suggests that someone can be set free. But only if the price is paid. Only if an exchange happens. You see, each and every one of us, we've fallen away from where we were meant to be. We've all taken the selfish path. We've made the choice to choose our own way and not God's way. We've all done things we know find well to be wrong. <laughs> and we've done them regardless. The Bible calls these things sin. And sin is an important topic. Because sin has a consequence. It separates us from God. It cuts us off from the source of life. The things we do, they bind us up, they lock us in chains of our own making. And the Bible tells us that the wages of sin, it's death. And that's the price that needs to be paid. Death. And that is how Jesus shows us that God loves us. Because he came to serve, to be the ransom. He came to pay the price. One who never sinned. The one who never did anything wrong. Gave his life for all of us who have failed. You see, we don't get to heaven by our goodness. And thank God for that. Because I fail to be good every single day. We get to heaven. Because the one who lived a perfect life. The only one. Gave that life as a ransom. He came to give his life so that we can be set free. His life for our life. It's, it's the great exchange. He gave his life so you can receive life and life everlasting. Does God love you? <laughs> I have no doubt that God loves you. Because I know he paid the highest price for you. The question is, is are you willing to come to him? Are you willing to let his death take away your sin? Or are we far too attached to our captivity? You see, <laughs> that's kind of the problem. We all seem to get Stockholm Syndrome for our sin. We fall in love with our captor. <laughs> When that happens, freedom can seem like an uncomfortable idea. But freedom, freedom is what we need. And today, now, the offer is freedom. To come to Jesus. He is the greatest master. How many other kings or politicians have actually died for you? Would actually make that choice. He died. And then he defeated death. On the third day, he rose again. And because he rose, you can be sure, death is defeated. And he offers you not just life, but life everlasting. The Bible tells us we believe and we confess. We believe it in here. We see it here. 
And when we do that, we are set free. The ransom is paid. And our lives are changed. I wonder today, are you willing to come to the one who did the greatest act of service for you? Are you willing to come to the one who set you free? The one who gave everything for you? Because he's just a prayer away. He's just a decision away. Are you willing to call him your Lord? Are you willing to call him your Saviour? If you'd like to take that step, if you'd like to say to Jesus, Jesus, I believe. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again and I believe you can change not just my life, but my eternity. Then all it takes is that exchange, he gave his life, you give him your sin, you make him your Lord. You say, Jesus, I trust you, I want to follow you, because I know your way is the way into life. I'm going to pray a prayer. If you want to know this Jesus, who ransomed you, from your sin, who ransomed you from death. Then pray along with me. There's nothing about this prayer in particular that changes things. What changes is what happens in here. That you say to Jesus, be my Lord. And if you can pray this sincerely, then Jesus can change your life now. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you gave your life to set me free. I thank you that you came to die, to ransom me from my sin. Lord, I believe you died and you rose again. And I thank you. Jesus, please forgive me. Let me be made new. Be the Lord of my life. And Jesus, I want to follow you from this day forward. Amen. It's a simple thing. But the consequences of it are massive. Can I encourage you, if you've prayed that prayer, first of all, get in touch with someone, whether it be us or someone who put you in touch with us. But secondly, take those steps in following him, start reading about him, start talking to him, we call it prayer. And start taking those steps into a brand new life, a life that will know no end. May the Lord bless you.